it still has the original paper maintenance instructions. Um, this is setting you back about 600 bucks. Uh, but that's the kind of money that you have to pay for K-bars in this condition. I really like the K-bar. I think it's the best fighting knife ever made. Just for the young guys, be cautious. One of the first that I bought was this one. I was sure it was World War II. I think the knife is, but the scabbard sure as hell isn't. It's embossed with the USMC logo. This is a commemorative post-war manufacture that somebody's fobbed off on me when I was a young guy. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the knife's okay, but the scabbard certainly isn't. So, before you go investing, make sure you do a bit of research. Don't be like me. Um, then we've got another one which is used to be common as anything. It's the M3 trench knife. This one manufactured by... Looks like... Oh my goodness. Knife and Fork Company. Kin Fork Inc. Good condition. Scabbard's in good condition. These things used to be done a dozen. Now, what are this one setting back? 350 bucks. They've become very collectible. I guess, again, probably since Band of Brothers, with a bit of interest in boot knives or the powers that the powers used. Um, then, just very quickly, we've got a couple of, of the commercial type Bowie knives. This is an RH36 mint, absolutely perfect condition. I've never had any interest in this sort of shit. This is the sort of stuff that we used to get given to us when we were in the Boy Scouts and destroy. But this type of Bowie knife now, again, with the Americans, has become very, very collectible. And it's an enormously wide field because there are so many manufacturers. But to, to find two, as another example, mint condition, World War II issue, that have been sitting in someone's man cave for 30 years, <laughs> is a bit of a coup, so I'm very really happy I got those two. The stuff that I'm, I'm look at, looking at getting now is this type of thing. These are hideous. They're New Zealand manufactured, locally manufactured, here in New Zealand for service in the Pacific. The Americans used these quite extensively, particularly in the 2nd Marine Division when it came down from Guadalcanal, prior to going and invading Tarawa, Tarawa, a lot of the guys purchased or, or perfed um, these locally made knives. They are hideously ugly. Aluminum hilt and a locally manufactured blade. Either it was a cut down bayonet or very often it was simply the, the uh, suspension springs from a Ford truck. <laughs> they took the metal and, and created a blade. Again, 10, 20 years ago you couldn't give these things away. Nobody had any interest. Now even though they're gopping, ugly, they've become very collectible indeed, and you'll pay big money. The provenance on these, they're both 3NZ division, which was a New Zealand division fighting in the Pacific, very briefly, up in the Solomons, before being deactivated, and the guys sent across to join the division in Europe. They've just taken a, a, a Lee Enfield frog, made a, a locally manufactured leather um, scabbard, and like I say, they're crude as hell but increasingly collectible. And if you can establish provenance as we have, we know that it was a 3NZ div veteran, um, they're starting to go up there with a couple of hundred bucks. So that's it. I think once I've allowed the guys to go down and look at the fighting knives, um, the two rifles. Frank, if you can get back to me on the, on the Condor Legion Mauser and give us some information, I'd appreciate it. Talk to you soon.